Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Welcome to the unboxing review of the Huion HS610 graphics drawing tablet. So those lovely people over at Huion got in touch and asked Mikey, if we sent our new HS610 over, would you like to make a review? And so I said yes, especially as this tablet is one which can work on Android devices. Although I'm going to be asking if that's really worth it. And of course, if you are tempted in this tablet, links can be found in the description below. So firstly, here's what you can expect in the post. A slightly larger than needed Amazon package, but safely inside is a thick brown card plane packaging box. This is all to keep the actual display ready Huion box safe from any scratches and scuffs, which is held snugly inside. The design on the packaging follows the white, clean and simple visuals that you get at the moment with Huion's non-screen tablet range, and on the front highlights the HS610 tablet itself. That theme continues around the edge with the Huion branding, and the actual main product specifications can be found on the back. Cutting the stickers open allows for the box lid to come right off and glued into the top inside edge is a layer of foam padding to further protect the contents. You're firstly greeted with the good old Huion thank you card and their stylus chan character? Anyway, you're welcome. And inside is a smaller black card box on the left that houses all of the tablet peripherals. There is the Huion 8192 levels of pressure sensitive battery free stylus pen, which is a slightly different design to the Canvas Pro range, more on that later. A pen pot, which unscrews to house a set of the spare nibs inside, the USB connection lead for the tablet, and then two small USB adapters, one for plugging it into a micro USB slot and the other to plug it into a USB-C. The tablet itself is packaged in a separate plastic sleeve and has a predominantly smooth over Overall surface that continues flush to the edges, with the exception of some slightly raised buttons and a wheel, and it's finished with a carbon fibre effect back plastic casing. Underneath this is the Huion branded smudge guard glove to allow your hand to glide smoothly over the tablet surface whilst also protecting it from any natural oils from your hand. And then we have the further information document package. A CD-shaped instruction card to go and download the latest drivers from the Huion website, the warranty card, which of course I'll never use, and the multi-language quick start guide as well, that highlights its use for Android devices as well as the computer. And so altogether, this is what you can expect out of the box. The HS610 tablet itself, the thank you card, the driver instructions booklet, a warranty card, the Huion smudge guard glove, USB connection cables, the stylus pen, the carry pot with the nibs, and the two USB interchangeable adapters. Basically everything that you need to get going immediately, just make sure that you don't lose that pen. So here's how the tablet looks in a small desk space like mine, and with its 10 by 6.25 inch textured active surface area that continues on flush to the edges of the tablet, it does look pretty nice. It feels fairly robust without being too heavy, but thanks to the rubber grips on the bottom, it does sit firmly in place. It sits on the desk with a nice and thin profile, and its dimensions are right in the sweet spot of being large enough for expressive gestures when doing art, but not so big that it becomes absurd for navigating your desktop and drop-down menus, reducing the need to really jump back to your mouse every time Photoshop isn't open. Now this tablet comes with 12 programmable quick access keys which are arranged in pairs, grouped with 6 above and 6 below a touch sensitive scroll wheel in the middle. And the driver software does support the option of flipping this tablet around for left handed use, if that's what you're into. The buttons feel okay to press on, with an ever so slightly raised surface area and a different plastic material. But there isn't a huge difference by touch alone to tell my fingers that I've pressed down on a particular side of each button instead of clicking the whole pair together. Now if you could grip the side of a tablet like a controller, your thumb could probably navigate these quite easily, which is good if a tablet is going to be resting on your lap. But on the desk surface, it's your fingers that tend to use them, and your hand can get a little lost, meaning that you might need to glance down at your tablet from time to time. The scroll wheel, however, was surprisingly responsive to my touch, and using it to zoom in and out of my work never missed a mark, whereas I'm kind of used to scroll bars being a little bit more hit and miss. The finely textured surface diffuses the light in a matte finish and gives a nice resistance against the pen. It's not at all grippy or impeding, but does certainly feel like there is a mild grain compared to something like a glass flat finish. It's nothing like paper, but it is still a nice surface to work with. 
As for Huion's latest 8192 pressure levels battery free stylus pen, the model that they include with this drawing tablet range does come in two plastic tones. There's the rubber grip with flared tip and a slightly silvered grey stem, and if we compare that to the same battery free stylus which comes with the higher end canvas range, you can see they are very similar at first glance, but the Canvas Pro pen is a bit longer, whereas the HS610's stylus nib protrudes just a little further out from the pen end. And although they slightly depress in much the same manner, it does feel like this might be similar technology that's housed in some slightly cheaper material. But that's just by comparison. For a desk tablet pen, it is very nice and ergonomic. The two buttons are easy to use with the thumb, and they stick out nicely from the profile of the pen with a little click. And visually, I do rather like it. The rubber part of the grip does pick up dust like a magnet, but overall it's incredibly light and easy in the hand. The pen pot isn't that weighty either, but just about does the job. And of course, the spare nibs are housed on the inside. Instead of a separate metal clip, however, this pot has a metal hole in the bottom that's designed to pinch the nibs at an angle for swapping them out of the pen. But that does also mean once they come out the pen, the nibs fall straight through the middle. Now, as well as working with a desktop or computer laptop, one of the selling points in this tablet is that it can also work with an Android tablet or even an Android phone, as long as it's using the version 6 software or later. However, I only use a battered old Samsung Note 4 with Android version 5. But surprisingly, it still responded immediately to the tablet when I plugged it in, and although I had to rejig the canvas size a bit in Autodesk Sketchbook, it responded immediately with pressure sensitive brush strokes. However, I'm looking at this tablet in regards to its use with a computer for some longer art sessions, and I'll explain my thoughts on the tablet use for it in just a bit. So I sat down for an evening to really get a feel for the tablet, and grabbed the latest driver from the Huion website made sure that the second button on my stylus was set to switch brush, amended the pressure curve to what suited me best, and then got cracking. Now the one thing worth mentioning to anybody looking to buy their first drawing tablet for getting into digital art is that it will always take some getting used to. Even if you're someone who's already confident drawing with a pen and paper for example, those skills won't perfectly translate across into digital. But this is not said in order to put you off, just to let you know that it is perfectly normal and not to feel too discouraged at first just because you don't translate your skills across immediately. Just keep using your tablet and you'll get used to it shortly after. With that in mind, I tend to take a more painterly approach when coming away from a touchscreen tablet and losing that direct coordination. But bearing that in mind, I found this tablet to be really nice to use. The pen felt great and super light all evening and remained nice and responsive to my gestures. The 12 programmable keys were a few too many for me to get used to in a single evening, and my fingers often forgot the location of a particular button or I just pressed the wrong one without looking. But if I kept it to a simple free common uses, then I was able to crack on fairly nicely. And the star for me was just how nice and responsive that scroll wheel was. And bear in mind that all of these keys are reprogrammable to suit whatever you might prefer. Now, the reason why I wasn't going to focus on this tablet for use with an Android device is that I simply don't own one at the moment. And although Autodesk Sketchbook is better than it's ever been when it comes to free Android painting software, I'm still used to being able to do a little bit more with Photoshop. And I wanted to focus on the tablet, not the different software. That being said, I was genuinely pleased to see the pressure sensitivity work on my older model phone, and I will certainly be playing around more with that in the future. And it does mean that if all you currently own at home is a simple Android tablet, then yes, you can buy one of these Huion bad boys and get arting after all, as the average tablet is roughly the same size of the drawing tablet here, and both can likely slip into a bag together, which means you can overcome the shortfalls of what might be an okay touchscreen that isn't actually good enough for artistic use. However, if I spent an evening squinting at my phone to do an art piece, I'd feel a bit frustrated with the lack of space. And other than having this at home or packed specifically in a bag for a holiday, this tablet is far too large to conveniently travel with you the way your phone does. So for use with a cheap Android tablet, this bit of kit really unlocks your options, and I'd recommend it for that alone. And most importantly for me as a desktop tablet, I'm also again really happy. Now it's worth just adding here that this 
this is not a paid or sponsored review, as I do often sound like a bit of a Huey on fanboy, but this will probably now stay in my house as my new backup non-screen tablet, especially for having that Android accessibility in case I pick up a cheeky tablet in the future. So again, the links are available below if you fancy nabbing one of these, or what I tend to do before buying anything is check out some other reviews from other people to see what they say as well. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of tablet reviews on the internet popping up in time for the next Amazon Prime Day. So once again, a great big thank you to Hueyon for sending over this tablet for review. And of course, if you guys have any questions, then get yourself in the comments section below. Otherwise, just make sure that you're subscribed to the channel for more in the future, and I'll see you next time. Take care.